Hey guys, this week it's all about heart rate. Let's get them up. <laughs> talking about heart rate so we're going to teach you how to take your heart rate the old school way we'll give you an app so you don't have to waste your time taking your heart rate and then we're going to talk to you about what your resting heart rate and your working heart rate should be when you are active let's get to it <laughs> I like bowed <laughs> All right, you all, it's always important to understand heart rate and why you need to take heart rate when you are active. Your heart is just a big muscle. When you're active, it pumps blood through your body, and the more active you are, the stronger your heart becomes because it's just a big muscle. So we are always trying to get our heart rate up when we are active, but you need to know how to take your, your heart rate. So we're gonna do it the old school way first. First, you take two fingers, your middle and your pointer finger, and you bring them to your ear and kind of go down to where your neck dips. You should be able to feel a pulse. Feel it? All right, then you're going to count that pulse for 30 seconds. At the end of the 30 seconds, you're gonna take that number and multiply it by two. That is then your heart rate. So let's all do it together, ready? All right, take these two fingers, put them by your ear, and then slide down and find where that dip is in your neck. You gotta be quiet during this so you can find your pulse. Try to find your pulse now. All right, now that you found your pulse, when I say go, you're going to start counting that pulse. When I say stop, remember that number because we're gonna multiply it by two. Ready, go. Stop. Take that number, multiply it by two, that's your heart rate. My number was 43, I multiply it by two, 86 beats per minute, which is an okay heart rate right now because I'm just standing here, but I have been talking a little bit. All right, now that took a really long time. So if you don't wanna sit here and find your pulse and count, then there's an app for that. It's called Instant Heart Rate. Let me show you. No need to count for 30 seconds, find your pulse, count for 30 seconds, and multiply by two in order to find your heart rate. If you have a cell phone, you can download Instant Heart Rate. Instant Heart Rate's really cool because, well, you guessed it, you get your heart rate instantly. So here it is. Um, there's other features on it that you can pay for. Don't ever pay for the app, but we like Instant Heart Rate because... It gives you your heart rate in any moment simply by placing your finger on the camera lens. So I'm going to do that. And once you do it correctly, it will say detecting pulse. And you have to be quiet during this time so that it does it correctly. doing a pretty good job all right so measurement complete of course you're gonna have ads because we're not paying for that um, but you can decide did did I just wake up is this before bed am I exercising am I tired am I resting um, at home at work all those different things so right now I'm just kind of standing here so I'm gonna pick that and then it tells me um, it will keep track of my different heart rates. So you can see Tuesday, November 3rd. At one point, I took my heart rate, and it was 127 beats per minute. 
Another day, Wednesday, October 14th, I was at 109 beats per minute. So it keeps track of it too, which is really cool. In case you want to keep track, maybe you want to keep track of your resting heart rate day, you know, day after day, like Mr. McCune is going to talk to you about. Um, so instant heart rate, really good for taking your heart rate quickly and also for keeping track of your heart rate. I highly recommend using this when you first wake up in the morning. Mr. McCune's going to talk to you about um, resting heart rate. And then also when you're active during that working heart rate that Mr. Kenny's going to talk to you about. So when addressing working heart rate, and we, when we go from resting heart rate to working heart rate, uh, we want to talk about getting our heart rate up. So increasing our heart rate through exercise. And our target range is 150 or above. When we've had PE, and if you've been in PE class, we've gone outside and we've ran laps around the big field and around the parking lot and back down so that we can increase our heart rate to 150 or tag games, or whatever you can do to increase that heart rate. So when we talk about that, how fast can you get your heart beating? All right, the key is 150 or above, and that is your working heart rate, and that's why you're being active, okay? Not sitting on a couch, you're actually moving, and moving pretty quickly. Okay, we've learned how to take our heart rate, we've learned what our working heart rate should be, now we're gonna talk about how to measure the condition of your heart. And the way you do that is by taking your resting heart rate. So before I talk about that, a good resting heart rate is 65 beats per minute. Now as middle school and adolescent children, your heart rate's gonna be a little bit above that. So don't be alarmed when your heart, resting heart rate is 80 or 70 something. But as an adult, 65 beats per minute is what you should strive to be. So the reason this is important is because you want your resting heart rate to be as low as you possibly can be, and that is a good indicator of the condition of your heart. If your heart is able to beat fewer times and still maintain homeostasis, then that's gonna be a good indicator of your overall heart health. So I check this, um, I've got an application, I use my watch, my watch will, I'll wear this at night when I'm sleeping, and I've got an application which I can sh I'll share that data with you, which tracks my heart rate over time. So pretty consistently, my resting heart rate has been in the 60s, and that makes me happy. If it drops down to 50s, I really get excited. But the reason it's important to me is because my dad died of a heart attack. So that means I've got a family history of heart disease, and we all know that that is genetic. So I need to be concerned or uh, indicated if my heart rate is starting to go up, my resting heart rate, that is. So if that starts to go up, and through my data on my watch, if it starts to tell me my heart rate is now going to 70 and maybe 75, then that might be an indicator to me that I got some form of blockage and I need to go to the doctor right away to get that taken care of. So definitely keep track of your resting heart rate. You should do this at least once a week. I do mine every single day, but I don't have to do anything because I got the watch that does it for me. So that's super convenient. But utilizing the application that Ms. Bush shared with you called Instant Heart Rate, you could literally do this once a week and it takes you less than 10 seconds. The key is you have to do this right when you wake up in the morning. That's when you are at rest. To do it now, you've already been up, you've already ate, you've already moved around a little bit. That's not your resting heart rate. So your key is to do it right when you wake up. Okay? Do it right when you wake up. Test question. Okay, also, we are going to ask you what your resting heart rate is on the quiz later at the end of the week. So we need you to figure out this, calculate it. It is a test question. The only way that you can do it is wake up in the morning, take that resting heart rate, and then you get your resting heart rate. So you will have to tell us how you figured it out. You're gonna tell us, I did it the old school method where I counted for 30 seconds and then doubled it, or you can count for one minute if you wanna be super accurate. Uh, or you can say I use instant heart rate, or some of y'all might actually have the watch and you might be able to do it just like me. So that is resting heart rate. And as Bush said, keep your rest of your heart rates up. For your resting heart rate, let's keep those down. Okay? All right, everybody. That's resting heart rate. Looking forward to seeing what yours is.